that's different. Plus, it shows Asian people that they don't gotta be a fucking Chinese restaurant or a or liquor store or a fucking laundromat or manager place. I mean, I'm just doing right. different fields of things, and, and I want to see where this goes, and it's, it's an opportunity. So that, um, I'm only doing like four pieces a year now for a very high dollar amount, so I don't have to do a bunch of small pieces. So I give me a little more time to be a dad, and uh, I have a Ben Ball brand. So like, I did an all gold money counter. That was sold out in eight seconds. You know, I'm doing like a sick, yeah, travel accessory. So now my, oh, by the way, I gotta bless you guys. My next one, dropping on 420, is I'm doing a Ben Baller all gold vacuum sealer. Oh, wow. <laughs> <It's here. laughs> well, you know they all want that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all they all want that. Burners are gonna want that all day right there. And you know, I need that. You know what's funny? I, I'm bless you guys. I haven't announced this at all, but obviously it's gonna come next. We're doing it in different sections, so after that, we're doing a small Tamika skate. You know what I mean? All gold. All gold. Oh, man. So, you know, it, it's been beautiful. Um, I signed with uh, XL Sports Management. They represent Tiger Woods, Derek Jeter, 15% of the biggest NBA stars in the world. I'm the first non pro athlete to sign to them. And Gotta back. love the so, like, behind the, the scenes only now. on Periscope all shit. All hard work. Like a lot of things, these blessings I'm seeing now, they're from like 15, 20 years ago when I was like tailing them and trying to figure out what's next. And all those blessings that, that finally started to, to come and, yeah. And, and so now I'm like, all right, well, cool. Let me let this work my shit out. And listen, man, I can go out and really work hard. And, and not say I don't work hard, but I mean, when I say work hard, like burn myself, burn the count on both ends and be on some, let me make a billion. But that's not like, you know, like I, I got, I, I, I'm good. And I know how much I need to get. I know how much I need to make. I'm not trying to go too much over that because I don't want, I'm like, fuck that, I'd rather enjoy life, man. Yeah, you gotta yeah. have a personal life too. Yeah, yeah. For, for sure. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you came from the grind era. Yeah. Like, we were always going from thing to thing to thing. Some of us didn't spend much time at home. Yeah. So it, when you get in that pattern, it becomes the pattern, you know, yeah. for your life, unless there's a slowdown moment. Yeah, you know? And, 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 well, yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but speaking to the fa the fact that you're a family man, sometimes that is what one you know that that is the thing that has you pump the brakes because you want to be around in those moments. You miss where to go. Well, how old were you in graduate school? Oh well, that, I was a young buck, but you know. Oh, <laughs> oh you're sixteen. Jesus Christ! So no, like, but 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 my no, my, yeah, yeah, my daughter one. now, you know, she's been gonna be ten. So you know, married. Yeah. you know, to her mother and all that stuff. It, it, it put it in perspective for me. Like, I can still go do the tours, and these guys know because they have to cover for me when I'm gone. Right. But, you know, hey, you, you're mm -hmm. if you're gone so long, you miss certain moments. What I'm getting at is, like, when I was 19, I think I, I almost got this chick, well, I think, I'm sorry, I, I think I got this chick pregnant or whatever, and, like, well, she was worried about it, and I, said, I had to tell her, I said, hey, man, fuck, you know, um, I was like, man, we're Asian. You already know this shit ain't like common between us. Like, oh, it's you know super. It, it was just true. Stereotypically, it was true that Asians didn't have kids at a young age. It was like you know late twenties, and it's getting further and further as time goes on. But um, you know, I thank her because you know that would have maybe slowed me down. I wouldn't have been able to, to to focus. And parenthood is one of the best. It is the best thing that's ever happened to me. So me having my first kid at forty, you know, I had a late start, right? And it's like all three kids. Now I'm done. Like my wife is 11 years younger. You know, my wife is 11 years younger than me, so she can run with them. I can't run with them the same. You know, I'm washed up. But I, can, I, I don't miss those times because now I know, like, all right, well, boom, I could go do this. I could pay someone to do But when I, trust me, when I want to be involved in anything, any of my businesses, whether one of my three businesses, I'm there, I'm involved in it. And I've mapped this out. Some people and other jewelers, you know, I, I'm, uh, this, this is funny. I just came to this realization last year, you know, 2019. I'm still having a hard time to think of 2020 right now. It was summertime. I was in the For now, 10 years, 15 years. I don't know me as a jeweler. He don't know me as a jeweler. When I see Fred Rex, when I go see fucking something, what I'm is that the crazy part is, that's what I've become most famous for. I had a TV show because of it and whatever. And it's like, I finally accepted the fact. I was like, I'm a fucking Jew. Right? <laughs> People are like, oh, you know, that's amazing that you finally realize that.
What's up, everybody? It's Yogi Diesel again, back with episode six. So we're back with episode six, Beer Quest. We got two intriguing beers to bring to the table. Which one first? All right, we'll go with the black can. So this is gonna be from Sweetwater Brewing Company, a part of the 420 strain, G13 IPA. We took an already dank IPA and married its hops with strain-specific terpenes and natural hemp-type flavors. The result is an aromatic, super hybrid, sticky IPA that's ready to rip. A strange new 6ABV strain indeed. Can conditioned for fresher taste. Check our... B I E B date on the bottom of your can. 42220. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, anything else? Got like a dead fish type deal going on here. Uh, really put on the can, not a sticker. Contains no hemp. Six percent. Got ourselves a clean can. Kind of smell that weedy, hoppy. Over here, all right, nice gold. You know, a cloudy in there. Decent head. Smells like an IPA. <laughs> you just get the smell of what an IPA smells like. I don't really break it down for IPAs. I mean, the hops. I'm looking for the G13, the hempy, the wheat smell. <laughs> Excuse me. I just really smell an IPA. So on first drink, Just goes down as a typical IPA. And then it's got these this other flavor, which is probably going to be the weed. There's no very standout. flavoring to the weed and just you know, tastes like weed and after drinking it it's more familiar and then you can start to smell the difference between that IPA 
and that added weed. Bit dry, a bit bitter, planty. Lots of beautiful earth tones in there for for an IPA drinker, and and if you enjoy dabbling with some cannabis and don't mind some specific cannabis flavoring in your beer. That actually might be something for you. Me personally, I am not that much of an IPA drinker. Um, I kind of look for something sweeter, less bitter, less everything that an IPA actually is. Now, not to say that it's a bad beer. It's a it's a decent beer. But it's not something I'm looking for. G13 IPA by Sweetwater Brewing Co. Try it yourself. Let me know. Now this this is cool. This was probably, well, the, this guy is, man, it's, you just get so clustered. So we'll just, um, we'll just go through. So again, Sweetwater Brewing Co. from the Strain series. We got Be Real from Cypress Hill, Insane OG, Mexican style craft lager. So this will actually be one of my first, um, what, no, my second, third, we, we've had... I and Turtle have had other musician collaboration beers. Two different, I'm not, you know, it's like, do you talk about previous beers you've drank on a beer review? We've drank Trooper and something other, The a couple of the Iron Maiden beers. There you go. So, Be Real teamed up with Sweetwater. Sweetwater came to Be Real to say, hey, you know, you're the man. You're, Cyper you're the lead singer of Cypress Hill. You've been around since the early 90s. You, the Dr. Green Thumb stores are all over Silmar and other places of California. Insane OG Mexican style craft lager. Makes sense. Let's see how it tastes. This is a darker gold. Yeah, decent head. Hmm, spicy. 
and that that weed really just comes through it's kind of um like like stuff peppers night in the in the kitchen You know, at the bar, you get all that flow and yeast and m malts and barley and hops, all that going in the air. And you throw in some deep fried jalapeno poppers and some, some tacos and some stuffed peppers. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Mm. This is like, this is a, this is like Tuesday night at Roberto's in Las Vegas. Two, you know, 3.30 in the morning. Like, it's weird. The weed taste is so strong. But then there's that spice to the lager. It's a little, it's a little light. Oh man, I just jumped right into it too. I didn't even read the can. All right, so. Insane OG, <clears throat> Mexican style craft lager. Oh, that's a sticker. That's a wrapper. Hmm. So we turn to a couple true OGs for this collab. Cypress Hills, Be Real, and his Insane OG. Dr. Green Thumb himself helped nail down the recipe for this intense Mexican style lager. Pick it, crack it, drink it up, come along. A strange new 5.6 ABV, strange indeed. And again, we're at a 42220 BIEB. So, there you go. For all you beer heads that want to know what's on the can, nothing else. 5.6, you taste the lightness in there. So again, I come to the, the question of would I buy this again? You know, I think it's, it's a really good, it's a good beer. All right. And I was very much drawn to it from seeing, I watch Be Real TV. I don't actually listen to Cypress Hill, not since... 1997, 98, when their Dr. Green Thumb album, I believe, came out. I think whatever rock superstar, I never owned that album, but that's around the time, like, I, I was pretty much not listening. But with Be Real's solo stuff that he has out, I have actually listened to a lot. And then he does a lot of music with Burner, who's always in my playlist. So, seeing that he was talking about this, and then I was... Wondering if I'd be able to find it and then days 
later. I found it without looking for it. It was just kind of like, oh, look, there's Sweetwater with their weed beers. And then it said limited edition Insane OG. So I bought the 12 pack. I don't go into looking for a Mexican style craft lager or a Mexican style beer in general. I have tried Corona, which is in a f f future review. Someone brought it to the house <laughs> and left it in the fridge. I've drank Tecati. I've I've drank Modelo. I might have drank. I might have had more. I just cannot recall the name. But for what it is, and him being involved with the flavoring and making sure what gets put out to the public is going to be a good drinkable beer, um, I think what is brought to us as the public is a drinkable beer. Would I buy this again? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Wow. Again. <coughs> Would I buy this again? Um, it would actually have to depend on the atmosphere. If I was able to get a six pack and say I was, it was a chill night, people were coming over or I was going somewhere, I think the 12 pack provided enough variety to say hey here's some beer and then also have a k you know a 12 pack of whatever beer i really choose to have um i guess i would like to have it in the fridge for other people to try would i buy a straight six pack of this i don't know again it would have to depend on my mood if i walked in there already buzzing off you know my day-to-day -day life maybe but no, probably not. It would only have to be because I'd want other people to try it and have their own opinion of it and say, hey, I tried that be real insane OG beer from Sweetwater. It tasted like weed and a decent beer. It's a bit too weak at 5.6 for me. Even the 6.0 IPA over here was a bit, you know, low alcohol for me. But these are definitely take to the party so that you know yourself that no one's gonna, I mean, only lightweight people could drink a few of these beers and make an ass of themselves. So that's been, but in this review, I have definitely had more of this than this. So that's been the Sweetwater episode five. Oh, wait, wait. Whoa, what's that over here?
here. Just, just chilling. Just fucking chilling. Oh. No, I'm kidding. So I thought it would be funny since I'm drinking some weed beer. So we got Rochester Beer Co. It's part of the milk milkshake stout. Double chocolate milk stout. Ale brewed with milk sugars, cocoa nibs, cocoa powder, and cocoa butter. Sticker on the can. We got a proprietary seven malt blend, 5.75 alcohol, IBUs 20. Got stout. Any stories or anything like that? No. All right. Got ourselves a clean can. Pop that shit. All right. Ooh. 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 That's just... Not much head, huh? I already know I'm going to drink all of this. And it's going to be hard because i got to drink the other two beers before I drink the rest of this. So. Mm, what was our, our date down here? Um, 6.05.20. Alright, dot com. That just smells like straight up chocolate. Like, like walking into a straight chocolate shop. It's a little light. And I don't mean that on the alcohol. I mean like the flavoring. The ale actually stands out. I think there's just so much cho different versions of chocolate in here. The smell is better than the taste. Maybe a little lack luster on the sweetness. Like when you make the mistake of eating the Hershey's cocoa cooking powder and you're like, Puh, what, what, wait, whoa, what is that? That's not Hershey chocolate. But it's still like aftertaste is very smooth, which is what I've so far after drinking the few now of these rochester mills in this series it's what i've come to expect i think too much chocolate too many different versions of chocolate But I mean, that's a, you know, it's a dark, it's a dark, but 
you can see how light it is with the with the foam. It's just not really like the other raw chesters from the milkshake stout series had more stick, more cling to the side of the glass. But I mean, really, who gives a shit? Does it really matter if your head foam sticks to the side of the glass? I don't really think it matters when someone's just cracking open a beer and they want to drink. Like, I guess I should just pinpoint these reviews down to just drinking the damn beer. Because that's all people really care about. Is it a good beer? Hell yeah, it's a good beer. Does it match up with what it says on the can? Hell yeah, it does. It tastes like quadruple chocolate. I mean, because it says cocoa nib or triple chocolate, right? Cocoa nibs, cocoa powder, cocoa butter. It only says it's triple chocolate. And that triple chocolate comes from Rochester Beer Co. It's a part of the Milkshake Stout series. Part of this 12 pack that I got from this really awesome person. And so far, all of them have been really good. But, you know, I think it was a little lackluster. If it was a little sweeter, it'd be a lot better. Just comparing it to the other ones that I've had, which were not over the top sweet, but had just the right sweetness. So this could be like an inconsistency in, in the brew. You know, that's cool. Whatever. At the end of the day, this beer is going to be number one. I would say then... The Be Real Sweet Water Insane OG is right there. And and I'm not saying that this G13 from the 420 Strain series of sweet water is a brewing company. It's a good IPA for someone who wants to have some IPA and an added little weed flavor. Low alcohol in all three of them. But still, all three pretty good beers. Would I buy the double chocolate again? Probably not. I wouldn't want to sit there all day drinking this beer to get to where I, I want to be. I feel like I'd have to drink a good three or four of them to start really feeling okay. And then buy a six pack, I'm gonna be so full. And I, I, I don't wanna say annoyed with the taste because if it was this one and not say some that were maybe sweeter, what if they were less sweet, you know? So going off of this one, I wouldn't want to drink six of them. I'd rather, if I wanted, I could see myself drinking six of these. Out of these three. I could see myself definitely drinking six of these. And even though it's the weakest one, I just, you know... Because the fact that I'd be like, I would probably listen to Cypress Hill and smoke weed and listen to Be Real solo stuff and him and Burner and I would just be in the mood and the groove and I would have a lot of fun and I'd kill a six pack and then, yeah, I'd smoke a couple grams of some fire and... There you go. 
This is episode six. I hope you enjoyed. If not, eh, whatever, you know. Can't win them all. If you liked it, then, you know, give a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, troll, do your thing. You do you. You may not want to go home, but this shit is over. Don't be donkey. I'm Yogi Diesel. This is my my review. Did we get it? Is it off? Fuck. Three beers was a lot. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, God damn cigarette. See, this is why people need to be a, be fans, you know. You get the behind the scenes. The behind the scenes where I like gotta finish the beer. <laughs> there are some good beers. I really am a little let. I am a lot of let down. No, 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 no. Milkshake style one wasn't all that great. <laughs>